Millions of Americans are just minutes away from the start of something we're not going to see again for the next 20 years, a total eclipse of the sun. The Earth, sun, and moon are all about to align in such a way that the moon will completely block the sun. More than 31 million people in a line from Texas to western New York are all in what's called the path of totality. These folks will be treated to the most dramatic swing from light to dark over a period of a few hours. So let's head over to Cleveland, where CBS News national correspondent Dave Malkoff is joining us. Dave, so great to see you. So remind us, why is it so important to look at the eclipse only through those special glasses and hopefully not the ripoff kind, the real ones? <laughs> Yes, yeah, I've got him right here. Hello, Liliana. That, that is a great question. Because you think of anything else in life where 99.9% .9 of it is basically the same thing as 100%. Eclipses are so much different. Even 99% of an eclipse is still staring into the sun because a little sliver of the actual sun is still coming through. So you still need to wear your glasses that will black out everything except for the sun coming through. But once the moon moves directly over the disk of the sun, you can actually take your glasses off at that moment where right after you see the diamond ring effect, you'll see a flash and then everybody can take off their glasses. What you're staring at is not the solar disk of the sun, but the atmosphere of the sun. You're looking at the corona, all of that gas and plasma coming off of the top of the sun. And it's an amazing thing because you never see that because the sun is just so bright. So that is the reason, Liliana, why you need to keep on these glasses. It's almost, it's pretty bright out here. So maybe I'll just keep these on for the rest of the live shot. They don't look bad. They don't look bad. So, OK. <laughs> So when, you, when we think about what we will tell our children that we got to see, what do you foresee is the most exciting part of this? Why should people, you know, care and, 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 and get excited and look up with the glasses? That's a great question because there's two reasons I can think of. Number one, we spend so much time looking down at our phones and looking. I think we lost him, um, but I'm sure he was saying that, look, look up, look up with the glasses. Uh, it seems like this is the kind of moment where you can let someone else take the photo. You can just be in the moment. And let's head now to somebody who's absolutely in the moment and ready for us, CBS News correspondent Omar Villafranca, who's covering the eclipse from down south. So, Omar, talk to us about what you are hearing and seeing. I see people preparing around you. Uh, I see a magnificent mullet right there behind you. People are ready for this yeah. event. And they are, they're cheering, not for us or for <laughs> you, but because the sun is out. It was yes. supposed to be overcast and it still could be overcast, but the sun is peeking out right now and you would think it was a rock concert. And listen, the Cotton Bowl has hosted a lot of historic events. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys used to play here back in the day. The Rolling Stones have played here a bunch of times. OU and Texas always play here for football in college. But today, they're hosting the Eclipse. Behind me, you can probably see a bunch of little heads here. These are anywhere from elementary to junior high kids. Yeah, and they're here to see this. And I've been talking to them and their teachers. And let me tell you what they're excited about. They're excited that they're not going to get a lesson from flipping through pages. Mm. Teachers and kids have all told me, I'm not going to be in the classroom. I'm going to get to see science instead of reading about it and learning about it. That is exactly what they are pumped about here because they know it's historic, mm. it's rare, and they're going to be a part of it. Not a cell phone in sight. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you know, that's that's one of those recommendations. I was hearing an interview with an expert that was saying that, look, don't try to take the photo. Be in the moment with the glasses yeah. on, but but yeah. witness this so you can actually live it. Not like, you know, when you go to a concert and everybody's phones are out. Let someone else, let a pro take a photo. Coming up, we're going to have an expert tell us how to take the right photo, but that's a separate topic. So how are officials in Dallas preparing uh, for, for the event and for the, I'm sure, multiple events that are taking place to witness it? Listen, there are hundreds of thousands of people who have come to the DFW area because we are in the path of totality. In fact, from about 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock Central Time, our time, they're closing the exits into downtown. So you're not going to be able to get in. They're trying to avoid traffic congestion because they know somebody's going to be driving, maybe hasn't paid attention, 
are going to see an eclipse and are going to want to pull over. So they're trying to avoid any accidents on the side of the road. And listen, this is a, this is a viewing area with 8 million people. They don't want accidents on the road, so they're trying to keep it safe. Here it's safe. These kids are excited to get their fans out, and they have their glasses ready to go. Hopefully the weather plays along. That's amazing. Omar, I'm so glad it's not overcast there, which is usually good for television, but not in this case. I'm glad you'll get to see it. <laughs> Suerte. All right, let's bring in CBS evening, uh, CBS mornings co-host Tony DeCopel, who's joining us uh, from Indianapolis. Tony, what's going on there? How are how are you and everyone else around you preparing for this big event? Uh, hey, Lily. Uh, well, there's a heck of a lot going on here. I'll tell you what. We got the uh, Purdue marching band off to my left. Ooh. We got uh, 50,000 people in the stands behind me. This goes on for a long, long ways. And this is the single largest, and we got race cars on the track at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And, so, and, one and of those. above us, on top of all of that, <laughs> we, are, we got the, the, the most significant solar eclipse to happen in this country for another 20, 21 years. So everything is happening. This is the single biggest one of the race cars right there trying to compete with the sun and the moon, but I don't think they're going to win. I really don't. <laughs> I think, the I think single Lana is biggest viewing those. location. Is that true? Yeah. I, hear, I keep hearing that joke being made, and now I'm thinking <laughs> no. maybe it's a reality. No, I think Lana is actually one of those. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling a surprise for later, but tell us what else is coming up uh, when you and Nora are anchoring the... Oh, there she is. Look at her. It's true. She's waving at us. She's talking. She's wearing a massive helmet, so that's great for your safety. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that you get to see her, but um, Tony, talk to us about what else can we expect from you and Nora coming up at 2 p.m.? Well, I mean, we're going to do this amazing thing. I mean, as long as there have been people, there have been people witnessing the solar eclipse, and now it's our turn. And to help us kind of contemplate what exactly is going on up there and what it means and enter into what people say is really a moment of reflection, we've got Bill Harwood, who's like a big CBS space guy. You know him from our NASA coverage. He knows rockets. He's also an amateur astronomer. And we have Lucien uh, Walkowicz, who is an astronomer, an artist, an educator from Chicago, who knows everything there is to know about the sun, the stars, and mm. the moon, and this rendezvous in the sky later today. And um, just how significant it is. I've been told, this is my first time, they've each seen it once before, Nora also her first time. I've been told to be prepared for cheering, for hugging, for silence, and also on occasion, people are moved to cry because they don't know what else to do. So when your, your mind has no frame of reference for what it's experiencing, there's no telling what's going to happen. So I'm really looking forward to it. Some people are even going to be saying, I do. Well, Tony, we miss you over here, but uh, glad that you'll get to see the eclipse in such an eventful and exciting way. Thanks for joining us. Now let's head back to Cleveland uh, with NASA program manager Kelly Cork. Kelly, thanks so much for taking the time. Um, what, talk to us about what viewers need to know about watching the eclipse safely. We keep saying it, but it is important. Definitely. We need to view this eclipse safety. It's going to be a magical experience, yet at the same time, we need to make sure to protect our eyes. So for what, uh, for during the, any of the part of uh, partiality, anytime there's only part of the um, part of the sun covered, you're going to need to use your glasses or an indirect viewing method. And those indirect viewing methods can be as simple as your hands making pinholes or a, uh, or a spaghetti strainer held off to your side so you can project that on the ground. Once totality works, we want to make sure, or happens, we want to make sure that you take your glasses off. So only in the path of totality, taking your glasses off to experience that corona, to have those emotions um, and all those things happen. So that's how we want you to safely view this eclipse. Interesting. I'm curious about that spaghetti strainer method uh, and glad that there's other options for those who couldn't find the glasses on time. So walk us now, if you may, through the science behind, behind the eclipse um, and, and why it's so rare, especially to see it in, in its totality, to, to be witnessing that complete blackout. 
Yeah, so that complete blackout is so important to science because what we get to see is the the sun's hot outer corona or atmosphere. And that atmosphere is what creates space weather. And that space weather affects us here on Earth. It affects our satellites. Um, it would, could affect our power grids, our GPS signals. Um, and so it's really important to understand that. So we've got two WB57s chasing the eclipse, getting two extra minutes of eclipse um, in order to, again, take those pictures of the sun um, with the disk totally covered so we can do that. We're also launching three rockets into the eclipse before, during, and after in order to study our atmosphere and its response to it. Um, so again, we are starting to understand uh, how our Earth responds to our sun. Kelly, thank you so much. The science is crucial there.